Hello. Today I'm joined here by Masha, who is a health psychologist and she's currently doing her PhD in psychology at the University of Bath. And as part of that, uh, that PhD, she's doing a placement at Hatha Medito Foundation. And that means that she'll be researching the benefits of mindfulness for, for people's well-being. So, uh, Masha, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe a bit about your own experience with mindfulness? Yeah. Um, hi, pleasure to be here. So, as you said, I am a health psychologist and I'm currently doing my PhD. Um, I'm based in Bath. I am Slovenian originally, but I've spent the last five to six years um, studying and living in the UK. So um, I'm now quite, quite settled in Bath. Yeah, what, what brought you to mindfulness and how did that kind of interweave into your, into your studies? So, um, as I said, I studied psychology in, in undergraduate level mm -hmm. and I came across mindfulness in there as kind of a therapeutic option for people that maybe struggle with depression, struggle with anxiety. Um, and then once I actually tried it out myself, um, even though I didn't necessarily have those issues at the time, um, I felt like it really helped me just kind of, you know, general well-being. Um, so I, that got me even more interested in it. Um, and I've always kind of been interested in um, in just healthy lifestyle as well. So things like um, exercising, you know, healthy nutrition, how it all kind of interconnects, um, physical and mental health, how, how it's all connected. Um, always been interested in that. So that's basically why I decided to do a PhD on this topic as well. Um, and I'm a big, big advocate for prevention rather than cure. So mm -hmm. always looking for kind of um, things people can do ahead of time. So before, you know, any health issues get too bad, basically. And I feel like mindfulness is a really, really helpful tool um, for, for arguably prevention of, of mental health issues down the line. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So there's a lot of research out there, isn't there, around how mindfulness can can benefit us and can prevent uh, us from developing kind of disorders and things. So what are you hoping to contribute to that that field of research that currently exists? Yeah, absolutely. So as you said, uh, mindfulness is quite well established by now as um, a really good technique for helping people feel better when they have some sort of a mental health issue. For example, if you, you have depression, if you have anxiety, um, other other psychological disorders as well. It's really good for just reducing stress in everyday life. Um, it's been found to help people with sleep. So as I said, kind of across the board, mindfulness seems to be really beneficial in just helping people feel happier and feel healthier. Um, and what I'm hoping to, to look into further is how maybe we can try and introduce mindfulness to some of the people that might not necessarily be super excited about it when they first hear about it. So mm. maybe someone that can't see themselves um, doing a sitting down quiet meditation for 30 minutes at a time, maybe how we can bring elements of mindfulness into their lives and so they can benefit from it as well. Um, and one of the ways through which I, I'm looking at this is seeing whether there's elements of mindfulness in exercising and to what extent kind of they're similar, to what extent they're different, um, and seeing how we can maybe best combine them to, to see how much people can benefit from this and hopefully, yeah, get 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 that combination maybe introduced to most people we can. Interesting, yeah. So I guess then it would be working on physical well-being at the same time as mental well-being. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So as I said, I think they're very much interconnected. There's increasing evidence from all sorts of disciplines, you know, everything from neuroscience to, to physicians, and um, seeing just how much they they're interconnected that physical and mental side of health so i think it's it's a really important link to keep in mind and perhaps it's almost a bit artificial that we've been keeping them separate for so long mm -hmm. and maybe part of my work is trying to bring it all back to just health as a as a uniform concept where you kind of need to keep on top of multiple different different approaches to keep it all going Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So super excited to have you on board at Medito to yeah help us to develop our scientific knowledge around what we're doing. I think yeah it'll be a, such a benefit to 
to Medito and to everybody who uses the Medito app as well. Um, so, uh, pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> so, yeah, can you tell us a bit more about the study that you're planning to do um, with, with the Medito app and, yeah, what, what, what are you looking into and uh, what are you hoping to find? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, we've just started recruiting for a study where we'll be using Medito's own mindfulness content um, and basically testing the effects of practicing mindfulness for a period of 30 days um, and see whether that makes a difference to people's psychological well-being, um, perhaps symptoms of depression, anxiety, um, reducing stress levels, whether it helps improve people's sleep quality. And then we're also looking at um, whether it changes people's attitudes towards looking after their health more broadly. And what we're hoping to find is basically that psychological um, improvement and psychological outcomes, hopefully um, we will be able to find um, because it has been, has been found before. So we're basically just seeing whether that happens for people that are new to, to Medito and you know, with, with your, your actual sessions. Um, and then for that second element of attitudes towards maintaining health and, and just health behaviors more broadly, that's a bit more exploratory. So we're just kind of scoping to see whether there is an association there and whether maybe that increase in, in awareness that you might get from practicing mindfulness, whether that translates into how you think about um, just keeping healthy or health behaviors more broadly. Mm. Yeah. Sounds super interesting. So yeah, I can't wait uh, to get started on it. So we we're going to need uh, a lot of people to to get involved, right? To take part in yeah. the study. Uh, so can you tell us a bit more about um, who we're looking for and uh, what what would be required for anybody taking part in the study? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you're right. We will be needing quite quite a lot of people um, because we'll, we'll get a group of people to practice mindfulness for 30 days and um, an equally large group of people to actually not practice mindfulness so that we can then compare the two scores. Um, so participation for either of the two groups will involve um, listening and do, doing basically a 10 minute audio session every day for a period of 30 days. Um, and then before that and afterwards, filling out um, a couple of questionnaires that we'll email to you. So it's all gonna be done remotely. Um, it's all gonna be freely accessible. And um, whoever actually finishes the participation, um, whoever gets to the end of it, um, can actually enter a prize draw for a hundred pounds prize as well at the end. So hopefully that's a little bit of an extra nudge there. Amazing, yeah, I didn't even know about the hundred pound prize. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, it always helps, you know, to have a little, a little something extra. But of course, there might be benefits to, to people's well-being and sleep and perhaps mm. um, helping to kickstart a habit as well, which, um, you know, I, I said earlier, that actually helps me kind of discover mindfulness, get into it. And I've now been practicing it for five, six years. Yeah, sure. And also, as well as I think the benefits that people will get themselves from uh, from starting a practice, Yes. by taking part in this i think it will also really help to you know spread the word about the the amazing benefits that can, that can come from mindfulness and the mm -hmm. more scientific research that we have to show the benefits the more we'll be able to present it to people and and show them that there are freely available resources here that we're that we're providing that anybody can access and anybody can start to get these these benefits so yeah i think it's really important work Absolutely. I was going to say one of the really um, big, big strengths of Medito is one, obviously it's free, but number two, and something that's maybe not seen as often um, with commercially available health products is that it is science based. And, you know, you are clearly working with scientists to try and improve um, what you already have and what you're, you're working on next. And having that science base um, is really, really helpful because that is the only way we can know that, you know, something might work and you maximize your chances of, of Medito being effective, of course. So yeah, that's a, a really big benefit of, of Medito's approach to everything. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like we have loads of anecdotal evidence, um, all the reviews that we get and the messages and the comments mm -hmm. and 
how much has helped them uh, with their own mental, mental well-being. Mm -hmm. um, but to be able to take it further and show scientific evidence of the benefits will just be yeah really really great to show absolutely yeah it's a different level of of kind of being able to claim that you know that this is helpful for you and i think to a lot of people that is really important to, to be able to hear as well so mm -hmm. a lot of people will actually only give it a chance once it has scientific evidence behind it yeah sure yeah, so we'll put the link for anybody who is interested in taking part in the study down below. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, take a look. Um, so there are some limitations on who who can take part though, right, Marsha? Yes, yes. Um, I would like to emphasize that for this study, we're only recruiting new users of Medito. So you, if you yourself have already been using it for, for a little while, um, maybe you can recommend it to your family, friends, or, or share it with someone you think might be able to benefit from it. Um, but we are limiting participation to people that are um, 18 years or older, so kind of adult for consent purposes, and then also new to Medito, just so that we can capture that almost initial improvement in well-being that, that we are assuming and hoping will be there. Yeah, sure. Great. Um, so, yeah, before we finish, um, can you just tell us a little bit about what you might be working on next? So once we've done this study, um, what else will, will you be focusing on? Yeah, so um, you you and I both know we have some very exciting projects coming up. I mentioned earlier that um, my current research mostly focuses on um, maybe the combination of physical exercise and, and mindfulness. And next project we'll do, be doing together will actually be um, looking into this combination. So we'll be developing some physical exercise focused sessions that will help people hopefully be mindful during their exercise and an example of, of the kind of session the things that the ses sessions will do will be you you might be prompted to maybe reflect on the progress you've made um, we might be helping you stay motivated for exercising um, so yeah really excited um, to, to start the work on this and stay tuned everybody <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I can't wait to use it myself. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the first is the study. So yeah, as we said, anybody who wants to get involved in that, click on the link down below. Please um, do. Yeah, thank you very much, Marsha, for joining me today and letting everybody know about this study and, and for all the work you're doing as well. It's really great. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you everyone um, at Medito. And to everyone watching, do take part. Um, it will really help um, everyone and advance the science on this. Thank you.